Hello, everybody. This is Joseph P. Farrell, and it is the weekend coming up of February 25th, 26th, and 27th. We're two months already, can you believe it, into 2010. Or pardon me, 2011. I skipped a year there. I had a leap year. And uh, we are doing our news and views fireside chat from the Nefarium, and uh, I had one Actually, two short announcements, and then I want to talk about a question that a Facebook friend told me I should talk about, and I thought I would, and it's kind of going to tie into the video chat uh, that we're going to have on Friday night, February 25th, for the members only area, and I'll be talking about that. So anyway, the first announcement is, as most of you know who've been following along in the website and on Facebook, is that I have the galley proofs of Jeans, Giants, Monsters, and Men. I put, if you haven't been following the website, I put up a little uh, thumbnail of the actual book cover, which is just a really, really cool cover. It was done by the editor at Feral House, a fellow by the name of Jacob Covey. And it's just really, <laughs> it's just really cool. Anyway, that uh, is what's going on there. I'm finishing up going through the galleys. I'm hoping to have that done this weekend, get it back to the publisher so that they can get it to the printer and get this book out there because it has been over a year now that they've had it. So bear with us, everybody. The book will come out. It will be out and hopefully into your hands pretty soon. All right. The second announcement I have to make is concerning the video chats. I have been very busy trying to put this website together. It's slow work because I have to do a lot of papers. That requires a lot of research in addition to the books that I'm writing. I'm actually writing two right now, so uh, I've got that. I've got some other big projects going, plus doing the website, so bear with me. Uh, part of the of what has come up is I've been slammed with a couple of very very major projects so I've had to cancel the March video chats that were scheduled although I'm planning at some point once things settle down a bit to reschedule a surprise video chat and I might be doing that actually in the next couple of weeks uh, on short notice uh, just uh, be watching my Facebook and website. I might do a special one just out of the clear blue to see who shows up and uh, just, you know, spend amount of time uh, talking about things and so on. But the ones on March 18th and 25th, I've had to reschedule for a variety of reasons that I can't get into right now. But anyway, that's what's going on with the announcements and everything. And now, without further ado, the question that I was asked was by my Facebook friend uh, Rick Duboff who asked me the question of and it's a very good question and it's something I think I should probably try and talk about and the question is how does the book The Cosmic War how is that book the keystone in the arch of all the other books Ex exactly why do I think myself that it is and why did I design it that way well, the short answer is is that there is one underlying theme in all of my books, and that is, regardless of what one is dealing with, if one's talking about the pyramid books, if one's talking about uh, the Nazi Bell Project, if one is talking about the kind of economic physics that I was talking about, beginning to talk about in the Philosopher's Stone, and then carrying that on into Babylon's Banksters and even to a certain extent, a much l more limited extent in Genius, Giants, Monsters, and Men, but nonetheless that theme, that undertow is present e even in that book and it is certainly present in a major way in the book I'm writing now, which I'll talk a little bit about. But that one theme is this idea that there exists or existed at one time in the mists of high antiquity a civilization that had a physics and engineering sophisticated enough to be able to manipulate the physical medium itself and all of the implications of that. So in other words, you'll find me in my books talking about how this physics can manipulate weather, how it can manipulate uh, planetary physics, uh, how it can manipulate the actual physical medium itself, even 
how it can manipulate consciousness and by the same token how consciousness has such a direct interface with this understanding in the ancient mind of the physics of the medium how consciousness can in turn manipulate the medium so this is a very complex area but that's kind of the underlying theme of all of my books and the reason that cosmic war stands as kind of the keystone in that arch is because I I took that idea and I used it more or less to examine the reason why you have all of these ancient gods in all of these epics, the principally the Egyptian Edfu texts, the uh, Hurrian texts, and some of the Mesopotamian texts like the Atrahasis epic or the Lugal A or the epic of Ninurta and so on, the texts in other words that I examine in the Cosmic War. I took that idea of that physics and essentially interrogated those texts in terms of that physics. In other words, did the texts contain language that suggested that those legacy civilizations were preserving the clues from high antiquity that pointed to that physics existing in ancient times? Now, there's a second uh, theme, and that theme is that the war was survived by elites. The elites were basically the good guys and the bad guys. And the reason I use that as a foil in that book is because you see in esoteric tradition, you see the stress on the idea of black brotherhoods and white brotherhoods. And in my mind, what they're talking about in esoteric tradition are these surviving elites from that high civilization in high antiquity. And I'm using that. This is the important point that I hope my question, or my friend that asked me this question, I hope this will answer what he's, what he's driving at. I'm using that idea of surviving elites with basically two ideologies in play, basically an evil one and a good one. I'm using that as kind of a basic model by which to explore the post-war activities of those elites. And that process of examining that post-war activity really begins in Babylon's Banksters, where I am attempting to show that there's a direct connection between open systems physics and open systems economics on the one hand and closed system physics and closed system economics on the other and the elites that advocate one or the other position. All right, And we see that clearly in modern times and we see it in very ancient times. And what I'm trying to do is gradually fill in those gaps in history that occur after the cosmic war and that's where the Nazis come in because obviously they are pursuing the open systems physics but to a very evil purpose all right now I should point out that genes giants monsters and men has as part of the subtitle the suggestion that the book is deliberately written from the standpoint of examining some of those post-war activities of the elites and that's definitely the case. I conceived of it as a book to continue that story and also to lay open the rest of the activities of these elites in a very kind of high overview survey manner that I'm hoping eventually to take each of those areas in Gene Steins, Monsters and Men and then pursue them in further books. I'm writing a book right now that continues to examine one aspect of that post-war activity of those elites and I'm examining it once again in direct conjunction with the understandings that those elites had of the physics of the medium and certain activities that they were engaged on basically let's say beginning in the in the uh, megalithic period and on up into the classical period so I'm examining the physics, I'm examining how they are, are constructing certain activities, construing certain techniques in a particular way. And that, that process actually begins in Genes, Giants, Monsters, and Men. And 
in a certain sense, it's kind of fortuitous that Gene's Giants, Monsters, and Men is probably going to come out in a couple of months, and then this book I'm writing now, if I can finish it in, in due time, will be out a couple months after that. So those books that are meant to go together will actually be coming out more or less at the same time. But that's why Cosmic War, to me, has always been kind of the keystone in the arts of all my books, because it's plugging into what the Nazi books do, it's plugging into what the Pyramid books do, it's plugging into what comes after in terms of the exploration of the activities of these elites, and it's it's something that I laid out deliberately in the Cosmic War that you could pursue all the way up into the modern period with the suppression of anomalous uh, of evidence of anomalies in outer space, of evidence of anomalous activities in the space programs on Earth and so on and so forth. So I, I set that book up to kind of fall where it did and when it did so that it would tie all these things together. And I hope that's an adequate answer to the question. And uh, I might be back with more fireside chats. I'm recording this actually on a Thursday night because we've got that video, uh, live video talk and chat tomorrow night. It will be my first one, and I do ask everybody's patience because um, I'm not a very good spontaneous talker. I do better if people ask me questions. So if, if you log on and I'm, I'm blathering away and not making any sense, uh, I'll start to make sense if you start asking me some questions that I can, I can talk about and respond to. And keep your fingers crossed because I'm the world's greatest computer klutz, so we'll hope that uh, I can manage the technology and pull all this off. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching the other this week's fireside news and views from the Nefarium chat. And uh, I might be back with more later. And I look forward to seeing some of you in the members only video text chat on Friday night. And we'll see you all on the flip side.